November 3rd, 2020. It is election day in the United States. Joe Biden and Donald Trump fight for the seat as the 2020 coronavirus pandemic ravages the world. An unprecedented number of mail-in ballots ensure that votes will take a long time to count. November 4th, around 2.30 a.m., the votes are still not in. Trump tests declaring a false victory as the states Pennsylvania, Arizona, Nevada, and Georgia are in contention. November 5th, 8 p.m. Biden is soon to win Georgia and Pennsylvania. Trump continues to question United States democracy. It is reported that Vladimir Putin will step down as head of state in Russia. Supernatural airs episode 18 of its final season. Character Castiel declares his undying, likely homosexual love for Dean Winchester. I love you. And immediately is sent to super hell. What's with all these last minute gays? Were the writers just like, oh, but what if in the last season we did gays? And you know what? I'm not opposed to gays. In fact, I, I fully support gays, but why last minute gays? If you haven't heard, Destiel kind of became canon in the most queerbaity, ambiguous, and terrible way. The moment Castiel declared his explicit love for Dean is the moment you also see Jensen Ackles ready to homophobe his way out of there. Castiel's love confession is followed by his descent into super hell. The leaked script is written to ensure Dean's hardcore masculine inability to express emotions because I'll be damned if characters grow. But whatever, I haven't watched Supernatural since before our descent into open fascism, so what do I know? Is it better that Destiel went from queer baiting to questionable burying your gaze? I don't know. Supernatural has always had a queerbaiting problem. They've hinted and implied for years that Dean and Castiel were disaster gays, but constantly mocked fans for thinking that their obvious bait was anything other than casual dude brodery. And last minute, they decided to wink, kill off their gays, and then piss off into the hell world we call reality. Remember Hannibal and Will falling off the edge of heterosexuality and falling in love with each other at that last episode of Hannibal? Yeah, great TV, but why is it so hard to get a thorough exploration of sexuality throughout the show and not last minute? And don't even get me started on animation. Okay, I'm getting started. What's with all these last minute lesbians? And you know, I'm not opposed to lesbians. In fact, I fully support lesbians. But why last minute lesbians? From the beginning, everyone knew Princess Bubblegum and Marceline were in love. I mean, from the shirt sniffing to the sapphic songwriting, it was obvious. And don't tell me there wasn't a Wooloo out there who didn't pine over Marceline. We could have had Gotham prep solidarity here, but instead we got a 10 season slow burn rivaled only by overly ambitious Kirk and Spock fanfic writers. And then, finally, we got a romantic confirmation. The last episode, when most of the original fans were already old and crusty and disillusioned. But it seems that for entire seasons, fans get made fun of for looking into the very real and very obvious current minute lesbians up until the last moment that they become last minute lesbians. Like, wow, thanks for acknowledging the queerosexuals at the last possible moment when your ad revenue wasn't at stake anymore. Lesbians don't deserve last minute. Lesbians aren't your undergrad essays for your early American history blow-off class. Lesbians deserve their own blowing. They deserve to be dissertations that you spent six years crying over. So you got the last minute lesbians that had to be fought for, like poor old Catra and Adora. At first, thousands of fans thought this was gonna be another bait or DreamWorks gay blunder. Oh, but no. Noelle Stevenson fought her heart out for the beautiful homosexuality we got in the last season. But the last season, why do LGBTQ plus people have to be dragged incessantly through gay purgatory and back, stuck scrolling through Tumblr posts and drudging through Catra Stan accounts, only for some dude bro in the YouTube comments to say, Oh, really? They're gay? <laughs> okay, weirdo. That'll never happen. And then for it to totally happen two years later after we've already stopped watching the show anyways. And it's not Noelle's fault. It's not your fault. It's not even the dude bro's fault. And for most people, it's not even a big deal. It's just another one of the small taken for granted aspects of being a queer person. 
a bunch of complex interactions that have placed queer people in a position where sometimes all they get is last minute lesbians. It's getting better though, as the PSAs of yesteryear told us. Catra and Adora, they were a godsend, in a totally secular and metaphorical way. Korasami from Legend of Korra, for example, had to be confirmed through a headline because the whole hand-holding and going off into the spirit world was a bit ambiguous for those of us who don't understand romance, but I guess we got the lesbians in the literal last minute of the last episode of the last season. Finally, all those hints that queer people were mocked at for picking up were confirmed. Well, if you read the headlines, of course. Bubbleine was marginally better. We got a hug with a kiss sound thrown in by the showrunners at the last second. And you know what? Good for them. Good for us. And Shira, finally, last minute lesbians with an explicit love confession, beautiful kiss, and a happily ever after. Who do we have to blame for last minute lesbians? Was it Good Luck Charlie with their two moms in the last season of their show in 2014? Was it Korasami becoming canon to the pleasant surprise of everyone? Honestly, does it matter? Like, who cares about representation when the world is going down the toilet? And further, who cares if it's last minute as long as the queers get their pigeon crumbs, right? I don't know. Maybe it doesn't matter. But sometimes these little things speak to larger structural fundamental problems. Maybe if we work on things like employment discrimination, the things on the edges would slowly get fixed. But that doesn't mean that the things on the edges don't hurt. Those small things on the periphery are a part of a larger mosaic. A tree isn't just a trunk, but also large and smaller branches, invisible roots at the bottom, all in one constantly changing body. And if it really were insignificant, why do advertisers pay so much for prime time? Why are queer stories safer at the end, or in the back, or at the last minute? Hey, you should subscribe. Also, check out my merch at teespring.com slash store slash r dash they dash gay. Also my Patreon, are they gay. And also my Twitter, at are they gay. And my Tumblr. And my Instagram. You know.